a weird flavor. Hmm. It's not bad though. It's happy. Oh yeah, it's way it's probably you probably don't like it much, do you? It's not my favorite thing. Hey, it's Sue and Megan in the restricted section. And today we're doing a review of the book Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doughty. Yes. We read that book for our book club and it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to be drinking a little something from Lagunitas Brewing Company. Lagunitas. Lagunitas. La Lagunitas. Lagu oh, it even has the pronunciation right on the bottle. Oh, it does. If I could read. Yeah. Lagunitas. I didn't even see that. I'm just that good. <laughs> <laughs> Substantial. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I've never had this before. Have you ever had this? I have not. I okay. don't think. So I haven't even either. tasted it yet. Me neither. Let's do it. Oh, that's hoppy. Oh, yeah. You're going to like that. It's got a weird flavor. It does have yes. smoke gets in your eyes and other lessons from the crematory. Yes, this was um, the author worked for a year in a crematory and she kind of wrote about her experiences doing that. Um, she also wrote about her her beliefs and her um, perspective about death and about how we handle death here in the U.S. Um, and how working in the death industry kind of helped change some of her views and informed some of her views. So. Yeah. And I think this book kind of kind of changed my views a little bit, too. Same. Yeah, because um, she really goes into... There's some parts that are a little gruesome. A little bit. She really describes exactly what goes into embalming a body, which is pretty disgusting and it's a little not horrifying. A little bit. And um, I had never... I had always wanted to be cremated anyway. Me too. But that yeah. just, I mean, it just kind of solidified that. Yeah, definitely. It also just made me think, I don't even care that much what happens to my body. Like, bury me in a hole. I don't care. Right. Just don't embalm but me. But don't embalm me. No, like, please don't. Ooh, please don't embalm no, me. No, no, no. <laughs> uh-uh. And it's just so much work goes into making the bodies look like Natural. as much like they're not dead as possible. Right. And, yeah, she really brings up how that we, in our culture, we kind of hide death yeah. from ourselves, I guess. Yeah. The only people that truly see it are the people that work in that industry, really. Right. right. Or, you yeah. know, people in hospitals, paramedics, whatever. Right. Yeah, people in the healthcare industry. So Yeah, and the rest of us, even if you see, like, a viewing at a funeral, that body has been prepared like highly prepared highly prepared <laughs> yeah that's not what a dead body looks like no and most of us have never actually really truly seen an actual dead a dead person. body yeah. yeah i haven't neither have i no i've seen no. people embalmed but yeah. i've never seen i've only seen people like at funerals yeah and uh yeah she goes into talking about how other cultures mm -hmm. handle death as well which I, that was probably my favorite chapter. Yeah. Because she talks about, there's a culture that eats mm -hmm. their dead. They, they, uh, and it's, it's not the, it's like the distant relatives. Right, it's not the immediate family. Yeah. But they're chosen for, and it's like a, it's kind of like an honor. Like, we're doing this to honor this person that we loved who is now gone. And we're doing this, you know, for them. Mm -hmm. And it's like a sacred Thing, but it's not pleasant, right? Yeah, because sometimes the body is like it's like rancid, and yeah. they'll like eat some and then go like vomit it up, which is <laughs> pretty disgusting. But it was just a, a she brought up a really fascinating point there that like we think of cannibalism as barbaric and awful, right. but they would think what we do embalming a body is barbaric and awful. Honestly, I think what we do is it's barbaric. barbaric and awful. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty terrible. Yeah, it's fucked up. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, she really compares like how other cultures they do see the death. Like, like there was another culture she talked about where they just like leave the body sitting mm -hmm. in the living room, like it's just still hanging out. Yeah. For like months, just chill with the body. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I thought that was really fascinating. I thought so too, yeah. And it was interesting to see, like, because she um, had an experience when she was a child that kind of made her focus in on death and kind of honed her attention onto death. Mm -hmm. And so she talks about kind of her um, focus on death throughout her life and how that grew and evolved and changed. And I thought it was interesting how much that impacted her life because I think mm -hmm. that, I mean, we're all cognizant of the fact that we're going to die. Right. But I don't think that it drives us as much as it drove her. Yeah. Most of us. True. You know. So that was interesting. Yeah. And I think anybody, because, like, I'm a fan of, like, horror movies mm -hmm. and things like that. And I think those things are, in some ways, kind of, like, people who are a fan of things like that do have, like, more of a fascination with death, I think. But <laughs> uh, I don't really know why. I would have that. Right. Because I didn't have any kind of experience like that. Right. Other than, like, my grandpa died when I was young, and I remember seeing his body mm -hmm. at the funeral, which was kind of... <laughs> maybe it's jarring sli to Maybe a slightly traumatizing. Right. It's a little jarring. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I don't know. I've always been a little bit more morbid than the rest of my family, though, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's probably accurate. It was really, like, funny, but really profound at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah, and I thought the humor was appropriate. Like, I, I, never, I never felt like she was being disrespectful. No. The only thing that I disliked, like, the last couple of chapters in this book just seemed kind of out of place to me. A little like, they bit. They just didn't quite fit with the rest of the book, and I didn't care about them <laughs> which is kind of sad because they were more about like her personal her, yeah. uh, what she kind of struggled with after she left working the crematory and she actually went to like mortuary, mortuary school, school. Um, and so it was kind of more her personal struggle but I was more interested in reading yeah. more about like the death Some industry dead people yeah yeah. <laughs> um, yeah but overall I still really liked the book I did too. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I both laughed and cried, and I'm not a crier. I don't think I cried at all in this book, but I did laugh. Yeah. <laughs> there was one spot I cried in, um, and I'm not usually a crier. That's weird because I am a crier, <laughs> and I don't think I cried at all in this book that I recall. Mm -hmm. What part did you cry in? It was the part where she cremated this elderly lady, and then not too long after, the elderly lady's husband comes in to be. Oh, he had passed away, yeah. and in his bag of effects that he wants to be cremated with is a little placard that they put in the ashes to identify them or whatever mm -hmm. and it's her it's her little placard and yeah like pictures of them when they were married and that was sweet but I don't think it made me cry cried I think I have to be like emotionally attached to the person okay for it to make me cry if it's an animal I would have cried yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, that is the one instance in which I am a crier. If anything happens to an animal, I'm, like, ugly crying. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I stopped reading books about animals, because um, they always die. Yeah. Or something bad happens and to I them. And I can't do it. Yeah, it was, like, sixth grade or something I read, um, where the red fern grows. Fuck that book. And, like, old yeller. Fuck that book. A dog called Kitty. Fuck that book. Uh, the Call of the Wild, which the dog doesn't die, but his owner does. So right, and it's sad for the dog. He still kind of gets fucked there. Right. So no. I was just like, I'm never reading books about animals ever again. Fuck all of that shit. They're all dogs in the, that instance, but there's not a lot of. There's more books about dogs than other animals, I think. I think probably. Well, I think people humanize dogs more. Mm -hmm. That's or true. Anthropomorphize dogs, I guess, would be the correct way to phrase that. Yeah. Um, anyway, back to this Any book. Any <laughs> Took a little tangent there. It's fine. Took a detour. Took we're a little. back on track. And how, here we are. Yeah, there, there we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, what other thoughts might you have? Well, did you kind of, after reading this book, did you kind of like solidify your plan for what you want done with you when you're Not dead? really. <laughs> no? My only thing is I'm like, don't, please don't involve me. But I've already like... I'm an organ donor, so I'm like, just, you know, rationale <laughs> my organs yeah. to whoever wants to. I'll just come in as, like, torsos, like, because <laughs> that's apparently what happens when yeah. you donate 
just your body, parts of you come in. Yeah, you just eventually. come in as parts, yeah. and your parts get cremated, which is a little which horrifying. Is, but you're I'll dead. Be dead. You're what do I care? It doesn't matter. Yeah, if yeah. I can help someone else live a little longer, why not? That's kind of how I feel. Or if about I it. can, even if you like donate your body to science, like if you can learn something. Yeah. Go Worth for it. it. Yeah, even if I get thrown in the body farm to rot. I'm not using it anymore. Yeah, I'm done Take with it. it. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about it. Like, use the parts of me that are worth a fuck still, and yeah. then just cremate the rest of me. Mm -hmm. And I would kind of like for my ashes to be put in one of those little tree pods. Oh, yeah. So I could be a tree. Or um, I've seen the ones where they, like, put your whole body under there. Have you seen those? Yes, and that's kind of weird. And also, if I'm going to do that, I want it to be positioned in such a way that I'm going to grow into the tree. <laughs> so you're like wrapped around it. Right, but I want so to be eventually... like this. Like wrapped <laughs> around the tree like this and so there's just like a so bony like, ass little yeah, finger. As the tree grows you grow yeah. up with it and yeah. there's just like a skeleton. Like wrapped around the tree flipping that's you off. That's pretty, that's, that's yeah. brutal. That's yeah. metal. That's metal as that's fuck. Metal as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I mean, whatever, it's fine. Just do what you will with my remains. Yeah. yeah. I'm dead that was interesting was that that maybe I hadn't considered was that um, there was a religious aversion to cremation like some oh, people yeah. some religious people are you know opposed Jesus to it will come you know the rapture or it's something. fine and so he he made goes. <laughs> fuck I don't know um, <laughs> so yeah like your body has to be intact so you can be raptured be or whatever um, and that's that's fine like I'm not going to your body's not going to be intact, though. You, de well, you decompose. And that's the thing. It's like you're <laughs> rotten. Like, you're completely rotten. So I feel like if you believe in that, like the rapture and whatever, if you believe that Jesus could, like, put your rotten shit back together, then it's he should Jesus. probably be able to, like, reconstruct your ashes because he's Jesus. Yeah. Um, I don't believe in that, so it, it's fine. But, I mean, I'm yeah. not one to begrudge anyone their personal belief system. So. Yeah. I thought that was. I think that eventually you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to start cremating bodies. There's not enough places to put dead no, bodies. No, there are like we have these big ass coffins in the ground everywhere. It's and like gonna, that doesn't stop you from de decomposing. No, you're still gonna rot. And what's the point? Like, why don't you want to decompose? Like, that's the natural order of things. You know, like why yeah. would you put yourself in a comfy box? Like, yeah, I want to give back to the earth. Yeah, me too. Like, circle of life shit. Lion yeah. King. Then you'll, you know, yeah. you'll in a way live on that way right. instead of just rotting in a box. I'm not about that life. Or death. I'm not about that death. Yeah. No. I'm not about that death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so overall, we both really enjoyed this. I think I Definitely. gave it four out of five Same. stars. I would have given it five except for those last two chapters. I was just kind of like, nah. Yeah. I'm a stingy asshole about my five star ratings, so I give it four. Um, um, so yeah, we definitely would recommend this if you're... Yeah, check it out. If you have a, a little bit of a strong stomach. It yeah. wasn't too horrifying. No, but there's there some, are some brutal parts. There's some parts in it that are kind of like, ooh. Ooh, heel. Yeah, and then this beer. This beer. Lagunitas. Lagunitas. <laughs> little something. Little something. It's a little something too hoppy for me. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't love it. It's okay. Yeah, it's just all right. How would you classify this? Is it like a pale ale? Um, it might be more like an IPA. It's more toward the IPA, I would say. It's pretty hoppy. Uh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say if it's an IPA or... It sure doesn't. It says hops, malt, hops, hops, yeast, hops, water, and hops. So, so I guess... Maybe that's I guess a lot of hops. A lot of, lot of hops, which I can taste. A lot of hops up in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's alright. It's okay. Nothing to write home about. Megan clearly dislikes it. I think it's okay. It's happy. Happy. Yeah, there's just something about it that I don't quite it's care a for. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Which is kind of a vague... That's a vague review. A vague review of it, but, but there is. There's just something I can't put my finger on. Quite A little something. A little something <laughs> that I don't quite appreciate. That I can't put my finger on that it just tastes a little weird to me. It does taste a little weird. And I don't care for it. Mm -mm. 
So overall rating of that is meh. Agree. <laughs> Mine's a little bit more on the hmm side of it, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that was our review. Yeah, so as per usual, we will post some links down below where you can find us elsewhere on social media. Yeah. Um, and let us know if you've read this book. Let us know what you thought of it. Yeah, for if sure. If you had any thoughts on death. <laughs> and tomorrow we'll have the New York Times by the book tag. Yes. Going up. So pretty excited about that. it. Yes. Yeah. So that's all for us today. Um, thank you guys for subscribing. Um, if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Do it. Yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.